Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Sugar Free Show with myself, Karen Thompson. I know it's been really, really long since I last um, shared a video, but I'm super excited to have Dr. Michaela Telekin with us today. She's known as the Low Carb RD and Mindset Coach. She's the founder of Healing with Foods, a wellness coaching practice focused on helping women reverse metabolic disorders like diabetes, PCOS, obesity, and more. So she does this in an amazing way, and she's here today to tell us all about this and then a new book that she's busy writing. Hi, Michaela, welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's How a exciting. pleasure, yes. I'm so excited to have you with us. Um, I had a look through your website and I absolutely loved it. And what I found super interesting was how you got to where you are today. Can you tell us a little bit about that? It was quite a ride, <laughs> a long ride. <laughs> yes, um, it's funny because um, my my um, I didn't start as a dietitian or as a, as a nutritionist, which I am right now. Uh, I started as a veterinarian, um, and um, that was basically because I love science and I love studying. And as crazy as that, as that may sound, when I was eight, 17 and I had to decide what school to go to, I said, mm, veterinary medicine, six years, that sounds good. <laughs> And, and I loved, like I said, I love anatomy, physiology, all that um, stuff. So it was a good choice. However, halfway through, like I was in my third year when I said, ooh, this is not for me. I'm not going to, I couldn't see myself as a veterinarian. I couldn't identify with the career. So I, I, I did it for a total of 10 years, but my heart wasn't in it. So when I moved to the States, I had like a chance to, to go back to school and this time to do something I was really passionate about it. And uh, that was um, partially driven by my own desire to heal with food, my uh, gut basically. I, I discovered in my 20s that I was chronically constipated. So that made me try all sorts of diets, you know, from uh, high fiber, like with lots of oat bran all the way to raw vegan and vegetarian. I know, I mean, I tried them all. <laughs> all in my attempt to solve this one thing, constipation. So it kind of made sense um, to, to go and study more nutrition. So I, I did the master's in nutrition and I learned about foods and health and healing and I applied on myself and eventually um, I, I got up here into the low carb world um, and that was not through my studies as much as was, again, through, through trying to heal that gut problem, which, believe it or not, by following for 10 years a, a vegetarian, veg like I went from raw vegan all the way to lacto-ovo. It was a period of 10 years. It really weakened my digestion. It just didn't work for me. There, there may be people out there that thrive on vegan diets and raw diets, I wasn't one of them. And at the time I lived in Miami, so it was okay for a while. You know, it's hot and it keeps you cool and all that, but it, it really weakened my digestion, affected my thyroid, my moods, uh, my, my relationship with food was totally crazy. I was running on sugar, despite the fact that I was coming from fruits and starches, nevertheless, <laughs> the bloodstream was sugar. So I was hungry all the time. It was so, so uh, interesting to see that in my attempts to heal, I just got progressively worse. So eventually I came across the GAPS nutritional protocol you're probably familiar with. And that spoke to me when I heard, you know, the explanation of the relationship between the gut, the leaky gut and, and the brain and the rest of the body and, and how important animal foods and fats are in healing the gut and the immune system. By that time, I felt so sick and tired of not feeling myself because I, I had a pretty good health growing up, but I could feel like I wasn't myself, my energy, my moods, especially after having my son, I, I went towards postpartum depression. I know the, the hormones had to do with it, the, the postpartum hormones, but a lot had to do with the food I was eating. I, was, I think I was fat deprived, number one, and then I was amino acid <laughs> deficient, and then I was overloaded with carbs. 
<laughs> so eventually, that's how I, I started the low carb world through gaps. I eliminated all the grains, all the sugar, all the processed foods. I wasn't eating much prof- processed foods. I was always uh, base, basing my uh, food on whole foods. But still, if it, even if it's whole foods, if it's more of a, of a macronutrient that your body can handle, it's not good. Um, and eventually, my health came back. I was back to my full self and um, about three years after starting the gaps, I went uh, back on, on, on a bike ride. I'm I'm a big fan of long distance bike rides. And uh, I performed a a 85 miles bike ride on a fasted state. I just had water and one bulletproof coffee before. And I rode no, I know I rode Uh. nonstop. I didn't get off the bike and it, I was like my own experiment. I said, what is this? Am I not human? How can I, I, how can I do this? I'm not tired. My legs are not tired. My mind was like high, I guess. Some I can it. do another 85. I know. It was absolutely <laughs> incredible. And after that ride, I, was, I paused. You know, I stopped. I was like, wow. I'm doing this. I healed my gut. I healed my mind. I was like good, stable moods, all that. I'm not running on food all the time. Don't have that anxiety. I have to leave the house and pack this many snacks just in case. I'm, <laughs> you know. And um, now I have this incredible physical performance. And it's interesting because I've done before a century ride and MS like 150. And I knew the feeling of feeling how I felt when I finished the long distance and how many times I stopped at how many rest stops. So it was completely mind blowing. And then I started looking into the ketogenic aspect of the low carb diet. Uh, until then I was, I didn't count macros. People would ask me, how many carbs do you eat? I'm like, I don't know. I just eat when I'm hungry. I stop when I'm full. I like intuitive eating. I, I like paying attention to how my body feels. I'm not counting anything, but then I, I wanted to know. I was curious to see what was my macro ratios, do, how many ketones I measured in my blood, was my blood sugar. So I, I did all that. that. From that point on, so that was in 2015, right? Um, now we are in 2017. I started looking at the, the ketogenic aspect of the low carb and uh, adopted more of that into my practice because up to that point, I worked primarily with people that needed to heal their gut, their autoimmune conditions to uh, rebalance immune system and reduce inflammation. And then I, I kind of expanded more into the people that may benefit from an even lower carb um, approach, basically. So that's kind of how, like 20 years of... Uh, <laughs> that's amazing. And did you study to become a registered dietitian? Yes, I did when I I moved to United States. I did a master's in nutrition and dietetics. uh, And then uh, after that, I sat for the exam, for the registration exam. And um, I worked for a major hospital. I was the outpatient dietitian in Miami for Jackson Memorial Hospital. And during that time, because I got so many overweight and diabetic patients, they were sent to me for diet counseling. I went and I got my uh, diabetes education certification. That's amazing. Now, now your traditional training goes completely against this low carb, high fat, ketogenic approach. Um, are you, I mean, are you getting into trouble for what you're promoting? Did you get into trouble? What's going on? So far, I didn't. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, good. I know there are hospital- more dietitians that embrace this. So I don't know what is at the organizational level. I'm not a member of the association uh, because I just don't agree with their politics. Good for you. Um, so I, I chose not to pay. I'm a member of the Institute for, for Functional Medicine and Western A. Price Foundation. I, because this, these two, I feel like I have no conflicts. Yeah. Philosophical conflicts, but any kind of conflict. Totally. I, I, I so, really respect that. So uh, I know uh, from, you know, being in the low carb world that there are several dietitians that do uh, the low, use the low carb approach. And of course, it's very common. And we learned in school, we learned about the ketogenic diet for epilepsy. 
Yeah. In fact, Miami Children's Hospital has a wing for uh, epilepsy to treat epilepsy, like drug resistant epilepsy with a ketogenic diet. There are dietitians that work there. That's incredible. So I was new. It was, but so it wasn't new to me the diet, but it was never presented as something that could be someone's way of eating and living it was these two years maybe for children that uh, are epileptic they are drug resistant um is, is not good long term and then of course when we learn about diabetes and diabetes ketoacidosis how dangerous that is and in, indeed it is diabetes ketoacidosis but it's totally different uh Totally. Story than nutritional ketosis. So yeah. you can't compare hurricane with um, summer shower, right? No. They both have water and wind. <laughs> I love that. I've never heard that analogy. I think that's great. And, you know, I think that that brings up such a great point in that there's still such a big, um, you know, void, which you're filling between ketogenic diets and low-carb diets as a lifestyle choice instead of just being a therapeutic benefit for a very small population of people. How are you bridging that gap with your clients? Uh, well, you know what? It's interesting. And that's what the, the main focus of my book is also. I always try to uh, encourage people to think, to go back not even to 100 or 200 years ago, which diet was very different than what we have today, but to the ancestral man. Let's see, let's imagine how did the caveman and woman lived? How did they acquire their food? Did they have three meals and two snacks a day at regular intervals of time? I seriously doubt it. Did they have donuts and drive throughs and escalators and... Uh, you know, the list goes on and on. No. So if, if we look at has, how our ancestors eat, ate, like what, what was their food based on? It was mainly um, animal that they were able to hunt with its natural fat content, right? Which were, were not very high fat because they were not fat grains, right? They were grazing animals and they just had as much fat as their wildlife permitted to, to acquire, to accumulate. Uh, and then they had access to roots, seasonal fruits. So it was very seasonal, very local. They migrated. They, they expended a lot of energy to acquire their food. It was no stability, no regularity. And if we look at our lifestyle today, it's the complete opposite. It's 180. So it makes sense to have all the chronic diseases we have, which are driven by food and lifestyle. So yes, it's nice. And I, I, that's, that's why I even used, I, I refer to the book as we are looking at modern nutrition through the eyes of the, of the ancestral man. Because it all has all been lived and done. Modern nutrition now just comes to show, oh yeah, this is actually safe. This is how human body is meant to function. It's meant to use fat as fuel and ketones as fuel, as well as glucose, depending on what fuel is available. But our default is actually to burn fat for fuel, not carbs for fuel. Our default is to be able to go a long time without eating, right? Imagine if our ancestors did skip their breakfast and they didn't have the energy and the mental capacity to go hunt or, or gather or, or find some source of food and water, right? We would not be here today. Absolutely. And I mean, you know, we've seen how chronic disease has shot up with the introduction of all these modern foods. And it's really amazing to hear a dietitian say that at the core of chronic disease is not so much genetic, although some of them are. Yeah. Um, it's about lifestyle factors and nutrition. It's about what you put in your mouth and how active you are and um, you know how you deal with that. So your book is called Make Peace with Fat, Applying Ancestral Wisdom and Modern Nutrition to Reverse Metabolic Diseases, Reset Hunger, Increase Energy and Maximize Performance. I am so excited to read it. <laughs> when will it be available? Uh, hopefully first week of December. That's my, my launch date, planned launch date. It, everything goes well. <laughs> the book is written. It's been editing. Now, right now when we are doing this interview is with um, a book designer. Amazing. So hopefully by the end of the week, I will have a, a PDF that will go to 
another edit. <laughs> yeah, know, we want to make sure it's uh, no typos and <laughs> misspelled. No, it sounds amazing. And and so, do you address all these topics we've been talking about, plus all chronic disease in the book? Um, is it like a self help book? Is it just educational? What? How do? You, how would you describe it? I think it's a combination of both. So my intention uh, for writing uh, writing this book uh, is threefold. And the, the, we can look at the book as having three parts. The first part is to raise awareness to the, the role modern food has in disease. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm uh, reinforces modern food, like food that we eat today and we think is food, right? Then, so that's part of the awareness, along with realizing how powerful real food is the ancestral food that the, uh, if the ancestral man were all of a sudden would be planted here would recognize this food how powerful that is in healing in health and healing so that's the awareness part so i try to help people look beyond like food beyond uh, calories and pleasure i'm trying to look uh, in, uh, invite people to look at food that how it interacts with our genetic material how it dictates what genes manifest and how it interacts with the hormones in our body. Um, because healing uh, and disease takes place in layers. I call them layers. Like the way we look at the uh, hormonal or systemic layer, which food Im impacts through, through the hormones that regulate energy metabolism. Then we can look at the layer, cellular level, which is the gut. How healthy is the gut? It dictates how we absorb the nutrients we eat, right? And how, how every cell in the body functions. And, and that uh, goes into the health of the gut flora. And then intracellularly, let's say we have healthy gut and we absorb nutrients. Now, how is the mitochondria functioning? The one that converts the nutrients we eat into energy. So those are the layers that, and all of this are controlled by food. So if we eat modern food, we drive disease at all these levels. If we eat real whole foods, ancestral food, we heal, we reverse the disease processes. That's why I say we reset hunger, we raise energy. So that's the awareness phase of the book. Then we have the knowledge base. I believe in knowledge is power. But if you don't take action, it's useless. So in the knowledge phase, I just educate what are macronutrients, what are the food sources, what's processed, what's not processed, how to, you know, how to, to make sense of when somebody tells you a low-carb diet, what does it mean? Or a high-fat diet, right? And then from there, once you're empowered with knowledge, you're aware, then it's time to take action. Now, if you want to take action, then I have a section where I give two nutritional protocols based on the, all the knowledge I acquired um, in the last, at least in the last five years since I'm doing the low carb approach, but it's throughout all my studies. Um, and I use it with my clients and I, I experimented greatly on myself. <laughs> so that's the metabolic reset protocol and the gut reset protocol. And in here, I give three steps or three pillars. Each one of those protocols have three pillars and they overlap greatly because the ma main macronutrient or, or food ingredient that we get is the carbohydrates. If we make changes around carbohydrates, we, we address this hormonal level of healing, cellular level of healing, and intracellular level of healing. And that all evolves around carbohydrates. And then quality of food, of course, is, is um, key. So that's in a natural, and then of course, aside from the step-by-step -step how you implement, I give a, as a model to help people jumpstart, I give a one-week menu with recipes. Um, I even did the macronutrients breakdown for people if they really, really want to know if they would follow that by the big spoon because it's recipes made by me and so nutritional facts are again based on a homemade recipe it's not like a standardized <laughs> recipe right but if they would be to follow that they would know oh i would land around 40 grams of net carbs this much fat this much protein quick quick jump start it sounds absolutely incredible and i, I mean I, even the, the way you've broken it down and allowed people to see what their macros are is great because I think it, it caters to a wider audience than just like one specific 
group of people. Um, I have just one last question before we start finishing off. And that is, what do you believe the role of exercise is in a healthy lifestyle? Wonderful. I love it. Actually, the, even the book has a section, Healing Beyond Food, where I don't go in depth. I just brush on what other aspects of lifestyle matter. So one of them is movement and exercise, because I see them as two different things. And uh, my, question, my answer to your question is, the only reason we need to exercise today, as in go to the gym, or ride the bike or lift weights or do CrossFit is because we lost movement in our lifestyle. Our, if, if we were planted in the Amazon, in the jungle, in the tribe that never was exposed to civilization, uh, air quotes, uh, and we start lifting dumbbells, they would look at us as like, what is wrong with this person? Why would they do that, right? Because they do that. They lift and draw, run and, and bend and climb for a living to survive. But because of our modern living, we lost all habitual movements or most of them. We have to plan exercise in our life. So the, um, the conclusion is move as much as you can habitually go against gravity and add plan exercise to it because it has its value. Does this answer? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of CrossFit. So no one can say anything against CrossFit because I do believe that it is taking us back to those habitual movements and teaching us stuff that we've lost by lying on yep. the couch or just spending our lives in front of computers. And, you know, um, so, so I do believe that it, it plays a great role in healthy lifestyle, in fighting chronic disease. I think that the two work so beautifully together because I've – gone on eating pro programs in the past where I'm just not motivated enough until I throw exercise and community in the mix and things change. Yes. So, um, I think what you've been saying is incredible. On each other. Yeah, okay. absolutely. And I think everybody's going to be super excited for your book. Um, and I, I think we should do another um, chat when your book is published. Um, where can people reach you? They can reach me on my website, healingwithfoods.org. Of course, on social media, I'm more active on Facebook and Instagram. Um, so I have a, a close private Facebook group. If anybody wants to be closer, you know, to have a little bit more of my uh, attention. And um, I will open up a group for the book for people that would want to buy the book or know when it's out and get uh, some freebies. You know, <laughs> I'm going to bribe people to, to get the book on pre-sale. <laughs> As I I really Facebook, um, and probably will be a, a chapter of the book uh, before the book is out. And plus I have another workbook that prepares the mind for any help, any transformation we want to do. We have to have the mind prepared because if the mind is, is not in there, you, you just can't make the change. Totally. I think, you know, the mindset is key to any behavior change. Like without that, nothing oh, can happen. 100%. Right? hundred oh, percent. So I will have Omihela's um, details below. So you can just click on the links and see where she's at. I always end the show by asking your top three tips for sugar-free living. Your top three tips. Number one tip, when you're ready. So when, again, when you're ready here, when you decide that you want to give up sugar, do it for good. Don't look for crutches like artificial sweeteners because oh, as agree. long as you stimulate those taste buds with sugar, it's just, you're just going to make it so much more harder. Just say, you know what? I'm doing it. And if you want to taper it off, you taper it off. But eventually you want to be zero added sugar. At least if we talk about just added sugar, not, not going to the what turns into sugar. So that's number one tip. Uh, number two is find the right environment. The people that will support you it's so so important you are the average of five people that you spend most of the time with and I forgot the name who, who says this I even put a quote in my book so choose wisely find the people that will invite you for a, a jog or a walk not for the happy hour <laughs> <laughs> I love that get rid of those friends that take you to happy hour right then the next morning you can wake up to to start fresh with <gasps> good habits 
Um, and number three, so we said about, what did I say? I said, okay, no, like no artificial, just make a commitment, no artificial sweetener. Your taste buds will get used to less sugar. You'll taste sugar. Cashews will be like, wow, did somebody add sugar to cashews? Um, second would be your winning environment. Yeah. And third would be, don't be afraid. Own, own the decision. Yeah. Don't be afraid to, if you go out uh, that, oh, you're going to be the odd one. You're not the odd one. The word is coming to, this is going to be the, the main way to do it. So just own your decision. Don't be afraid to ask if you go to a restaurant or if you talk with friends, don't politely say, thank you. I made a commitment to myself to, to be sugar-free. I want to experiment that. I want to see what life is if I'm not like this sugar doesn't get a big hold on my of my brain beautiful i absolutely love that guys so go check out Nihela's work it looks amazing i'm super excited for the book to come out as always leave comments let us know what you think um and we'd love to hear from you so until next time bye thank you